Um, I'm not making light of this storm, um, Helena, Hurricane Helena that came our way. Uh, it, West Tennessee, we, we were safe from it, uh, but Mid Tennessee, East Tennessee, and, and the rest of the South uh, was horrifically damaged by this hurricane, and I'm certainly uh, not making light of it. Um, but I want to talk about the professing Christian attitude. Uh, that needs some discipleship. The the I don't know how many churches are not discipling people on how to handle trials. And though there's nothing we can do about a storm, if God decrees that it comes, it's coming. Um, but we can prepare. We can pray. And today we live in a time when many professing Christians will actually criticize those that prepare. You know what a person that prepares is? It's a wise, wise steward. One of the three P's of a, of, a, of a husband is to be the pastor, protector, and provider. And one way to protect is to prepare for these great storms that will come our way. And, of course, we're negatively called preppers, like prepping is a bad thing. Well, if you make a cake, uh, whether it be scratch or from a box by Betty Crocker or Aunt Jemima, you are preparing to make that cake. You are a prepper. So prepping is not a bad thing. You should be prepared, and we should always pray without ceasing. But let me talk about this. Um, it's uh, I'm going to talk about, this is not going to be a actual, it's not really going to be a Bible study. It's maybe maybe we can call this a topical study, but it's certainly not, not, not a teaching of the scriptures. It's just a brief overview of some passages throughout the Bible. And yes, the Bible does talk about storms, either physically or spiritually. Um, but back in 2000, 2025, Democrats wrongfully blamed President Bush and Cheney for Hurricane Katrina. And now today, in 2024, many are blaming President Biden in Harris. And believe me, I don't like Biden and Harris or that Waltz guy. I don't. But the Lord's elect ought to be saying this about storms that come our way, like this Hurricane Helena. Whether it rains or not, my God reigns. Even when it rains too hard, my God reigns. Whether the weather is this or that, my God reigns. He is sovereign, ruler, king of kings, and lord of lords over all matters and everything and everyone, including the climate. That's the climate change that I can believe in. His holy hand is on the thermostat as he decrees the degrees. He is the great I am that I am. Though these verses that I'm going to read to you are not speaking directly of this, they are applicable because my God reigns. Psalm 47 8 says, God reigneth over the heathen, God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Psalm 96, 9 through 10. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. The judgment of God is inevitable. And who are we to complain that God would decree a storm to come our way? Now, I'm not making light of storms. I'm not making light of their storms that they had in Middle East Tennessee and the other southern states. We were hit just 18 months ago with a tornadic superstell right here in my hometown of 700 people that literally took homes from the foundation. It was a horrific storm. So I understand how bad these, so I'm not lacking empathy and sympathy for those that go through these storms. But the Christian attitude should still never change change revelation nineteen six, and i heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying alleluia for the lord god omnipotent reigneth people are angry that they allegedly weren't warned i'm seeing this on social media and multiple platforms people complaining that they were not warned about this hurricane i can't understand that because it was on fox news uh, uh um newsmax that i tried to watch more than that uh, uh one america news it was all on 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 of course the liberal stations as well it was and not 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 to say that those are 
the other ones are true conservative stations, but but it was all over the mainstream, lamestream media. And I know the media lies, but there was also a lot of truth about that storm that was coming. And so I can't see how people were not warned. These people that actually allege on social media that they were not warned. They're blaming the government. I think they're making a political thing out of this, just like the just like the Democrats did when Katrina Katrina hit um, New Orleans and, and Louisiana. Uh, they're blaming. They've got to find somebody to blame uh, rather than embrace the sovereign decrees and perfect providence of what the Lord will bring our way. There's phone apps. There's weather radios. There's radar. I, I in my MCOM room, my ham radio emergency communications room i have i have a, a screen on the wall for radar i have phone apps i have um and, and when the electricity co- goes out we have generators we have um weather radios we have ham radios we have all the resources that we need because we are prepared there's no excuse for not being warned some of them complain some of them say they weren't warned at all they didn't even know that a hurricane was coming <sighs> Some of them say that that they were warned, but the news media either lied or underreported that it was as serious as it was going to be. And it was very serious. Hundreds of people died. Many, many, many hundreds are still missing right now. The death toll will rise. It was quite quite a tragedy for, for those that, it direct, that were directly affected by it. But there's a greater storm that's coming that only the elect will be prepared for. And that's what I'm going to transition into from the physical realm to the spiritual realm. And those of you that are Christians, if you allege to be a Christian, you better be able, if you cannot handle the, the, the in faith, the, the physical trials that the Lord gives you, how you, I mean, what about the spiritual realm? What about what the Lord's going to bring there? So there's a greater storm that's coming that only the elect will be prepared for. Uh, Matthew 24 is one of many, many passages from both the Old and New Testament that give us many warnings. Yes, you've been warned about this spiritual storm, about this huge, huge, catastrophic storm that the Lord will be bringing. And the following is just a brief overview of some of those passages. In verses 3 through 14 are the signs of the times of the end of the age. I'm not going to read all of this, Matthew 24, just some of it. But I would encourage you to read it, study it, digest it, soak it up like a sponge. Search solid commentaries and sermons from solid theologians. 13 through 14, the signs of the times and the end of the age. And it says right here, oh, actually, this, I am going to read this passage, excuse me. And as he sat upon, this is speaking of Jesus, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of this world? Because the end of the world is coming. That's a good question. And we are in the end times today, folks. And the end of the world is coming. In verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. You shall be, this is like section A, column one of the news. I loved it when we used to have newspaper stands, uh, newspaper downtown los angeles they actually had little stores selling newspapers there on the shelves or or little newspaper stands on the corner and and you you would walk by and you would see the headline you know what the headline news is if you wanted to grab a paper or not it was five cents then 10 cents then 25 cents then 50 cents and then more on sundays extra extra read all about it section a column one tells you all about it and you would grab that paper and read and that's what matthew 24 is folks that's what it is. Section A, column one. One of the many warns. There's many passages that do this. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. So you shall be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. The end is not yet because all of these things must come to pass. And the scripture describes all of these things that are coming past. They're, they're almost like the contractions of a, of a pregnant woman, birth contractions. They're getting closer and closer as she's giving birth to the child. And these end times trials, tribulations, and, and horrific events that are happening are going to increase. They're going to increase. And we must rejoice. Praise be to God. Verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation, 
nationalities against nationalities, ethnicities against ethnicities, racism will will increase in kingdom against kingdom. The kingdom of darkness against the light, kingdom of the world against the kingdom of God as well. And we must be involved in this war, but the battle belongs to the Lord. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All over the world in various places, there will be all kinds of turmoil and medical tragedies and, and, and diseases and, and sicknesses and viruses. And, uh, and, and the, the, the increase of earthquakes is biblical. It must happen before these things come to pass, before the second coming of Christ. Just yesterday, in, in, in the Pacific coast, where I came from, in the Pacific Ocean, a massive volcano erupted, and the state of California California, or the West Coast, excuse me, yeah, them too, was under a tsunami watch. One of the biggest earthquakes we've had in a very, very, very long time. These things will increase. We don't need to get our panties all in a bunch over it, but we do need to be prepared. Prepared. Verse 8, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We are to pray for the persecuted. But you know what I do? You're not going to like me for this. Me and other Christians, not very many, not very many will admit this online, publicly, on the internet. But some of us actually pray for persecution. Because... The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. The, the, the blood of the martyrs and persecution will, will, will strengthen the church. It will separate the wheat from the goats, the, the wheat from the chaff, or the sheep from the goats. Hey, COVID did that. We saw how many Christians truly stood solid through all of that and how many professing Christians did not. Verse 10, And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Don't we see an increase of all of this? This is good news, folks. It's not bad news. Oh, don't read the newspaper. It's negative news. Don't read Matthew 24. It's negative news. No, this is positive news. Don't be a pessimist. Yeah, be positive. This is positive news. This is good news. Verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love, because death for the saint is good. Death for a Christian is good. It really is. By faith, you can say that. Verse 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many grows cold. And he that shall, and he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Yes, the saints will endure to the end. God, it's called the perseverance of saints. God will preserve them all the way to the end. Verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. How many churches are not doing this in, in America? The majority of them are not. They're not biblically discipling. They're not biblically training. They're not sending out preachers to preach in the streets and everywhere. The church is called to train up, to disciple, specifically men to preach, but women to share, women to share, but men to preach, to go, stand, to send, go, stand, show, and tell, to stand and preach the glorious law and gospel in any place where people are living, any public realm, the marketplace, the highways, the hedges, in the store, out the store. Yeah, you might get kicked out of the store like I have. Then just go outside and preach outside the store. There's all kinds of venues where we can stand and herald the glorious gospel. We must do these things, and then shall the end come. Verses now. I'm not going to go over these verses. I would I implore you to go over them and study them. But in verses 15 through 28 would be, if we were to read it, the Great Tribulation. Verses 19 through 31 is the coming of the, sec of the Son of Man, the second coming of Christ. Verses 32 through 35 is the parable of the fig tree. But now we're going to look at verses 36 through 44. And that is, no one knows the day of the hour, the, the day or the hour when the second coming of Christ will come. Not even Jesus 
who's truly God and truly man, knows when his second coming will be. Verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Jesus himself said, only his Father knows. He doesn't know, the angels don't know. Verse 37, but as the days in Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 38, for as in the days in the days of Noah, just as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, merry and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the, entered the ark. We are in the days of Noah today, just like in the days of Noah then, when the Lord decided and decreed that he would annihilate the population uh, and annihilate planet Earth with a flood. He decreed that Noah would put some on the ark. The ark would save some, but many uh, other, the others did not take heed to the warning. Jesus is the ark of salvation today. He is the one. He is the only way of salvation today, and that is Christ Jesus, our Lord. But we are in the days of Noah, where people just just drinking, marrying, working, playing, recreation, entertainment, giving in marriage. They're doing all the normal things of life, but they're not ready. They're just like in the days of Noah when they weren't ready for that big, catastrophic worldwide flood. So shall also the coming of the second man be. They are not ready. Just like in the physical realm, so many were not ready for Hurricane, is it Helena or Helena? I, I'm not sure. They weren't ready. And the non-elect will not be ready for the bigger storm that is coming. 39 verse 39 and knew not until the flood came let me read let me go back to verse 38 and then we'll read verse 39 for as in the days therefore in the days they were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark verse 39 and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the second of the son of man be Verse 40, then shall two be in the field, then one shall be taken and the other left. Then two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken and the other left. Verse 20 to 42, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Yes, folks, the storms are coming in the physical realm. The, hor the horrific volcanoes and earthquakes and hurricanes and tornadoes and all other things are coming. They're coming, and you must be prepared. But our attitude must be that we fear God, trust God, love God, serve God, and preach and teach the gospel while all of these things are happening. Now, the gospel, this passage talks about the gospel. It is in, and I talked about how we're told to go out and preach or share the glorious gospel. Not by being relatable, not with being relevant, but not by being pragmatic, but just go stand and share or preach the gospel. For those of you that don't know the gospel, I want you, even if you think you know the gospel, read my gospel track called The Good News on the website on the menu bar. Click on that. Respond in repentance and faith. Put your faith and trust in the finished work of Christ, of what he accomplished on that cross via that vacacious, efficacious, vicarious death, atoning sacrifice, death, burial, and resurrection, as well as his ascension. Put your faith in the finished work of Christ and Christ alone. Until we meet again.